Hey gang, it's JC, and this is the Daily Dose for Tuesday, August 16th, 2011, a combined venture with Mind Active in beautiful downtown Brentwood. Great television archives, top of the page, our eye candy feature along the bottom, so other great stuff for you too. And our rock and roll poll question is I still battle with a little bit of laryngitis here. I'm fine, I'm not sick, but my throat is blown out. I don't know what's going on, but we're forge ahead. Anyhow, our rock and roll poll question. You know, Warenberg Theaters made the announcement over the weekend that they were going to ban all cell phone usage while you're inside the actual auditorium watching a movie, and that includes texts. Now, I understood the phone calls, obviously, when somebody's phone going off in the middle of a movie, but it was interesting that uh, I'm sure they did focus groups and lots of research, and they said, no, we don't want people texting, nothing. You put your cell phone on vibrate, no texting, no nothing. And they're going to have people going through the theaters, making sure that people adhere to this new policy. And I said in yesterday's Rock and Roll poll question, what do you think of Warrenburg Theater's new policy of no texting and requiring moviegoers to set their cell phones on vibrate? And to my surprise, again, you never cease to amaze me. 92% of you said it's a great idea and long overdue. 92%. That might be the biggest landslide we've ever had in the history of the rock and roll poll. Only 7% of you thought that it goes a little too far, and only 1% said it's a terrible idea and I might stop going to their theaters. Now, see, personally, I think you should be able to still be able to text, but I am outnumbered, and so that's it. Those are the new rules. This is the new world at Warrenburg Theaters, and let's see how they do with it. All right, today's rock and roll poll question. As you know, yesterday, if you were listening to the showgram, uh, the Big 550 KTRS, where Trish and I reside every day. You know that I really had a problem with the, the climate that is going on between the city of St. Louis and the St. Louis Rams. You have a situation here where the Rams are demanding a new stadium, and St. Louis basically saying, where the hell are we supposed to get money for a new stadium, especially in this economy? The you know, Ballpark Village, for example, is just shot. That's never going to happen. Nobody expected what, uh, you know, I mean, 02, I think, is when they... You know, really sort of broke ground and announced uh, the plans, at least, for the new baseball stadium downtown, which Ballpark Village was going to be a part of. And look what's happened in the last, you know, eight or nine years. It's crazy as far as the economy and the financial situation in this country. <coughs> so you have the Rams say, we don't care. You need a new stadium. Nothing wrong with the dome as far as I'm concerned, but the Rams are still like, no, we want a new stadium. And the city of St. Louis going, I don't know, leases up in a couple of years. And then over the weekend, we have our first Rams preseason game, and they bring in an announcing team from Los Angeles, which I think is sort of creepy and hostile and passive-aggressive. And so our question today, plain and simple, do you think the Rams will still be in St. Louis in five years? Up or down, yes or no? Do you think the Rams will still be here in five years? Please answer our rock and roll poll question. We will have results for you tomorrow here on The Daily Dose. So um, pictures of Taylor Swift from her concert on Saturday night have made their way onto the Internet and are being seen around the world. That's right, the concert here in St. Louis on Saturday night. Why is that? Because there were fans blowing, the air was circulating, and your dress came up from behind, and everybody's like, oh, what are we going to see, what are we going to see? And what you saw was nothing. As a matter of fact, you saw an industrial-strength pair of granny panties which, I don't know, for some people, maybe it's going to be a welcome change after all the upskirt shots of uh, everybody from Miley Cyrus to Taylor Momsen and uh, Britney Spears and everybody running around with no pants on. So, I don't know, maybe that works to her favor with the country crowd, who knows. Billy Crystal, as you heard on Trisha's Trash yesterday, thinking about maybe coming back to host the Oscars again. He did it eight times between 1990 and 2004, and when he came out uh, last year just to do a cameo, uh, the place just absolutely went wild, and people sort of figured, well, oh, maybe it's time to bring Billy Crystal back. They have not had a lot of success with hosts, but they're making stupid choices, too. So maybe Billy Crystal coming back. TLC has canceled Kate Plus 8. You can sort of see that coming once the old man was gone. So now the question becomes, uh, are they coming up with some way to salvage the show? And will Kate Gosling become so desperate that she will actually reunite with her ex-husband just to be able to save her television show because this is somebody who wants and needs to be on television. And if she's not, the question becomes, how is she going to support those eight kids? She doesn't know how to do anything else. She's got to be on television doing something. All right, Lady Antebellum show on Friday at the Indianapolis State Fair. 
has been canceled. Also, the cancellation of Janet Jackson's concert as part of that. So see, something good came out of the whole stage collapse. you got to really wonder when the lawsuits will start flying there. From now on, when John Mellencamp makes sweet, sweet love to Meg Ryan, uh, he's not going to be cheating because John and his ex-wife Emily are now officially divorced. Not sure if this is a compliment, but New York Jets quarterback Mark Sanchez says he'd like to date Jennifer Aniston, and he wants to date her because he says she is experienced. All right. And Holly Robinson and Leah Remini are leaving the talk on, on whatever it's on. I think it's on ABC. I don't know. But everybody else is staying. I've never seen the show. Your cell phone might be making you rude and stupid. A new Pew research poll, it's a pretty reputable organization, has found that one in eight people have pretended to be using their cell phone to avoid, being, avoid having to interact with other people around them. Just pretend like you're on the phone. It doesn't work so well if you pretend you're on the phone and then it rings. Um, and one in four people have had trouble doing something in the past month because they didn't have their phone and had to rely on their own brains. All right, according to a kidnapping negotiator, uh, this is one of those things where you say to yourself, well, I hope you never need to use this, but I guess there's nothing wrong with knowing just in case. If you are kidnapped, the worst happens when you're kidnapped, and, and, and it usually happens when you're close to home, and uh, the kidnappers are most dangerous in the first half hour when they are closest to getting caught, and you probably shouldn't try to negotiate your own release or tell them you have money because then that gives the kidnappers leverage. Hopefully you never have to need that. Uh, more than half of women, ah, more than screech, more than half of women are pretty sure that a car dealer will try to rip them off. More than half. Matter of fact, the survey of women talking about trying to buy cars reveals that 43% of women say dealers are patronizing when they talk to them. 33% of the women say they hate car shopping because of how they're treated. 40% of women would never buy a car unless they had a male friend or family member with them. And 10% say they feel like buying a car from a dealer is as bad as being a road rage victim. Car business apparently still really failing uh, when it comes to women. Brooke Hogan says she doesn't have a perverted relationship with the Hulk. I agree. I mean, from what I've seen, they act no different than any other father and son. <laughs> Anna Paquin got naked again on True Blood last week. I swear to God, if this girl wins an Emmy, the, the statue is going to have an erection. Jennifer Aniston's reps are denying that she'll appear on the final season of Days of Our Lives because the last thing Jennifer needs is another commitment that will end oh, after a few months. Madonna turns 53 today. If you're looking for a gift, something uh, young and male and brown would probably be a good idea. Chrysler suspended nine workers caught smoking pot and drinking before work. The FAA immediately hired them as air traffic controllers. And scientists say there's a species of snail that travels by first being eaten and then being pooped out by birds. That's how they get around. Of course, the human equivalent of that is flying American Airlines. All right, if you're looking to uh, score points and win a trivia contest sometime, this is the date on which the very first Sports Illustrated was published. 1954 was the date, and the first guy on the cover was Eddie Matthews of the Milwaukee Braves. It was the Braves back then. All right, it was on the state 1977 that Elvis checked out. I remember the day very, very well. I was working in radio in Fort Wayne, Indiana, and sprung into action and put together a one-hour special, which we ran that night and then was uh, repeated the following weekend, and uh, I really uh, scored a lot of points with the listeners in Fort Wayne back then. Of course, uh, Elvis's colon was twice its normal size during a, uh, due to a buildup of white fecal matter. This is not how you want to go. All right, JC's Eye Candy today. We have come up with the 25 greatest unscripted scenes in film. If you know anything about making movies, uh, depending on who the director is, they will afford the opportunity for the actors to sort of riff a little bit and just sort of, you know, improvise. And sometimes the improvisation becomes one of the most memorable scenes in the movie. We'll give you an example with Dumb and Dumber, Caddyshack, The Shining, Being John Malkovich, the 25 greatest unscripted scenes in film. And they are some of the most memorable moments in film. 
And who knew that these things never really appeared in the actual script of these movies? So 25 of them, and it is on JC's Eye Candy. It is right below what you're looking at right now. Have fun. Oh, by the way, turn the speakers down if you're at work because there's profanity. There's F-bombs and stuff like that. We always try to let you know if something uh, <laughs> like that is the case because we don't want you playing something that the boss walks by and somebody's just F-bombing away. All right, uh, that's it. JC's Daily Dose for Tuesday, August 16th, 2011. A combined venture with Mind Active in beautiful downtown Brentwood. There are 37 days left to summer, 76 days until Halloween, 100 days until Thanksgiving, and only 131 days until Christmas. Plan accordingly. That's it. In the meantime, we've beaten this one to death. Have a good one. See you later. Bye. Bye.